Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Welcome back. I really commandeered that intro, didn't I? Uh, I owned you it. You really did, yeah. It's nice. Took charge. Powerful stuff. Uh, Just a week ago, you were like, oh, you guys need to do more intros, and, and this is why we can't do them, because you just hog them all. Leaps in. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's the alpha male energy that I give out, you know, it's the, the yeah. powerful ma- masculine um, vigor. The dominance, the, young, the, the, the assertion of your the dominance. The young wolf of the Trifles podcast, if you if you like. You know, That's really why you get, get so uh, many ads on Tinder, mate, so many... Uh, true, yeah, so many on messages. that topic as well, not to... Um, not not to um, bring up uh, bad, well, maybe not bad news, but kind of bad. You're turning 40 this year, aren't you? I am in less than a month. Um, oh my God. Meanwhile, PFLAX is popping his vitamins for 50 year old man, I heard earlier. Yeah, I've got my Centrum Advance 50 plus. 50 plus. Jeez. And I take uh, vitamin C and zinc. <laughs> See, I'm just okay. in the middle. I'm just a 40 something now. Just like uh, you know, in the middle of if my of my not quite fifty, but uh, you're the also, filling to our trifle just, sandwich. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's... I'm the cream inside the pie. Mm. <laughs> so I'm the pie crust. Lewis right. is the delectable soggy base. Oh, yes. I was thinking I was He's the a soggy tin foil. Biscuit. I was the tin foil um tray, <laughs> which you get. Yeah, you're the tin foil tray. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, lads, we were going to do a mailbag today because I doubt we could talk to each other for an hour and a half uh, <sighs> without going insane. So, um, well, the thing is, me and, me and P Flax have spent the entire week together, so we've we've yeah. exhausted all conversation. Um, what kind of stuff did you guys talk about? Oh. Nothing suitable for the podcast. It did you have any? Happened. Did you guys enjoy like a Shangri La together, like uh, of an evening, and uh, and just uh, you know get deep? What's did a guys... Shangri La? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fancy. I don't, know. I don't even know. <laughs> Would you care for a little Shangri La with me? This what does that you care even for mean? A bit of a strawberry Shangri La. Oh, you're, you're thinking it's a cocktail, <laughs> right? I was thinking it was some sort of affair. Um, it did you know, sound affairish. Yeah. yeah, my wife yeah. is having a Shangri La with my neighbour. <laughs> uh, you wouldn't think it was a cocktail. Well, a different kind of cocktail, I guess. Yeah, a little mm. bit uh, different. Uh, yeah. All right, this is uh, this is uh, from Sam. You want to the, just uh, jump straight? In. We could talk a little bit about what we did in the weeks. Yeah, fact. go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got time. So it was the Oscar fifteenth birthday party last Friday night. We rented out this little bar that's. I guess it's one of these sort of wanky places that people, it's kind of around the back, and I get the impression right. that it, it isn't a normal bar that people go to. Um, nice. It's kind of off the beaten track, so it's... It's a function. It's a function like bar. Like the Blue underneath, Oyster. Underneath the hotel, yeah. 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 It, it, was, it was not wanky, it was really lovely. Uh, I'm not sure where the wanky uh, is coming from. It's got like these paintings hanging on the wall that you couldn't buy. They've all got price tags on them. Do you know what I mean? I reckon local artists sort of you know, give them to their place for free, and then with the idea that you're supposed to be able to buy them. And so, way you're at jealous the of you were you tempted. You were tempted it, it sounds like, like two or three grand each. These things, and they're like, oh, oh now I see why you're get calling some it wanky. Yeah. Get some Brindley originals up there. Yeah, some Brindley originals. Maybe I will. Get... Maybe yeah. I will. Um, no, but they had the they had they did a TikTok function earlier in the day with with official TikTok, which I feel find. Unbelievable! Um, I don't believe that that was actually a thing, but that's what they said. So you can't. You just have to take them at their words. Sometimes it was really nice seeing everyone. Had like fifty of us there, uh, no plus ones, which was kind of weird uh, because obviously there's a lot of plus ones who we know quite well. <laughs> right. you know I mean, so it was kind of weird not having them there. Um, and then a few people there who, um, you know, I haven't I haven't seen for a while, and who came along, like just managed to. S- to sneak their way in um it was just really nice it was really really wholesome rich gave a little speech he said to me you're gonna need to do a speech lewis he told me this the day before and i spent the day thinking should i prepare something i asked piri and i was like what should i what should i do and piri was like they don't really want to you don't have to do a comedy set you know you don't want to stand up in front of them they, they don't want they don't care just say something cheesy wholesome inspirational and nice and um, and say here's to another fifteen years. So that's why did, did you say here's here's to another fifteen years? Now get back to work. <laughs> did <you? laughs> no. Did anybody uh, did anybody chunder? I did anybody so. pee in their pants? One person yes, peed in their pants. But no comment. We're not going to say who. And did somebody actually pee in their pants? Yeah. And I think a oh couple of people chundered as well. But 
Maybe, not not maybe, to my not knowledge, to my knowledge. but yes, I'm sure there were some Chandra. Any pooping yeah. in pants? No poop. I don't think so. There was this um there's this person called the Piss Bandit, uh, who does come <laughs> along and sometimes piss in people's pants or their beds. <laughs> Um, and so, you know, that happened to a, f- a couple of people. Um, but yeah, Ravs will tell you about them. Ravs knows. If I, if I did a, a full piss on somebody or in their bed, they would be drenched. Like it wouldn't even just be a little, <laughs> it wouldn't be like a little spot or a puddle right. or whatever. Like when I piss, I go big. It would like, flood yeah, the it's whole a, It's a the huge whole building. piss. Yeah. Right. That would be one of them it's things like where they have to have those industrial fans to like dry yeah. the building out. Ah, uh, no chance. Yeah, well, then you've got to go. That's right. Um, anyway, the next day after that, we played board games all day. Me and P-Flex hung out, played board games. We, we did the Cowboys. We did some zoo building. It was, we played some games. It was great. And then the day after that, we did um, the Task Box viewing of the new Task Box episode that's coming we, out. We did a recording before tomorrow. that as well, which was most of the day. But then yes, we went to the task box. Uh, oh we played premiere. we played um we did the new games night. We played the new we played a miniatures yeah. game. World War we Two did. miniatures game. We filmed filmed that for games night. Seven hours. That took so fucking long, my God. We started at eleven and finished at seven. Yeah. And then we went to the t- me and Piran went to the wrong bowling alley. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we walked all the way to one side of Bristol Town Centre to go to what Lewis thought was the bowling alley everyone was meeting at, and then they weren't there, so we had to walk all the way to the other one. It was just went to the screening. <laughs> it was good. Went to the screening. Really good to see. Which was because we went to the, went in to the, the new task box. You see, it was great to see you on the big screen. We we read to the cinema to see it. So yeah, it's been a whole week of like activities, and I yeah, didn't lots of really do it on purpose. I like to kind of when Piran comes down, I like for us to do stuff together. But it just kind of happened that. Um, we, there was a lot on. It was, well, it was I mean, I, I, I timed my, I timed coming down around the the celebration because, first of all, I fucking love a party, and second of all, I just wanted to see loads of people in one place because sometimes I'll come down and I won't get to see this person or I don't get to hang out with that person. So I thought this is good because I'll get to see everybody. Um, yes. I just love it. Normally, you know, when periods down, down I like to try and like give him to other people, you know, so. <laughs> Like it's like, like you, an unruly child. You go and hang out with Tom and Harry tonight, and then I push you to the Duke. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so you go and hang out with Ravs and Duncan tonight. You go and push you that way. Um, but no, I've been around. I, I don't know. Somehow I got glued on to everyone, and I've had a really nice week actually. I'm, I, everyone is exhausted though. Everyone is like telling me like I don't want to do anything else. Please uh, stop. Um, Let's just have some. You can't convince them to do another twelve-hour board game session. Everyone's or desperate there. to actually play some Baldur's Gate or some games. We haven't done that for right. a week, so um, we can do that next week. We can uh, we can crack on because we've all finished it now, right? So, and yeah. then some. I started yeah. another run right after, but I I I quit out because I think I just played too much. But I'm down for more. Cool. Yeah. I've had a break. Well, we now. said we'd we'd pick it up again. So anyway, that's that's what we've been up to, Sips. It's been a crazy week um nice and yeah on top of that i'm trying to do jingle jam prep which is a nightmare but it's happening oh it's kind of soul destroying i've told you enough about it though let's move on from that um all right let's crack on with the uh if 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 anyone in chat has a good email that they can compose during this mailbag episode there's a slim chance it'll get read but it better be in good. Let it's it gotta be good. Be good. Not, let, not. We don't want any subpar emails. We want really, really good ones. Right. Top level. All right. So this one is uh, from Danny, um, and uh, he's laying out some words and phrases that make him furious, and he'd like to get uh, our thoughts on this list. I, I think it's a pretty good list. All right. Here's number one: staycation. You're sure. fan of the, the word staycation. It's like a holiday where you don't leave the country. You, you yeah. Like, if you stay in the like a local vacation. Yeah. A local holiday. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I feel like a staycation is when you put a tent up in your garden or when you, you know, pretend that you're going on holiday, but you don't leave the house. Like, I think a holiday in the same country you live in is, is just a vacation. That's just a holiday, right? Stay at home. It's like a break. It's like yeah, a little I bit guess. of a break from the door. Right. <sighs> well, Lewis, you might have seen you might have seen this sad. one. When, when people put twenty eight revolutions round the sun in their bio instead of just saying that they're twenty eight. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. Uh, mm. People actually put that? Yeah. I've been and then they the wonder sun why they're single twenty eight times. Yeah. I date someone how, who's how had that in their bio. Referring not, to holidays as, not as a red holly flag box. for me. 
Holy, yeah. holy bulbs holy, is holy like bulbs. A, you're like an old man who's saying that. Holy right? bulbs you're, is you're fine. Not, you're not an old man. You're like an old church pastor who runs a youth club. And <laughs> yeah, says, all, all, your, going, all your all your sorry lads, I'm home. on my holly yeah. bobs next week. Holly bobs. I think it's the it's fine. the lady in the office who she's in her fifties and she says, "Oh, where are you going anywhere nice in your holly bobs this year?" She's like yeah, overly exactly, chirpy. Yeah. I'd say. Yeah. I don't mind. Again, I think um, that's not a red flag to me either. Staycation. No red flag. No. What I about? Mean, I, when I don't people... really use any of these terms, but I don't actually mind. I'm not chirpy enough to get with. I've I've met a few people recently who do casually use things like holly bobs and stuff like this. They talk much more energetically, and they 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 move and they gesture and they you know they <laughs> they have they have youthful energy and vigor about them, and it makes it makes me want to have that, but I don't. I have the the same energy as you two right now. Um, the kind of slightly. Do you think at <sighs> one point in time, somebody saying holly bobs was the equivalent of like somebody now saying that something is sick lit, or lit. lit or something? You know, <laughs> like, do you think that that was ever the big thing? Like, fuck yeah, man, holly bobs. <laughs> like, I'm just undoubtedly. Fucking, yeah. I don't, but, uh, you know, like maybe no, in like I, the 1930s or something. I think holly bobs sounds like one of them. Yeah, like like in chat, one of them words that you start using ironically and eventually it becomes unironic. Yeah. It, oh, just, I, I don't like. Here's, here's another one. When people caption their photo, like they'll be holding a drink, well, it's five o'clock somewhere. That's what, how they'll <laughs> caption their photo. Uh, yeah. People referring to their, their husband as hubby. Oh, like, yeah, that, that, that is, yeah. Yeah, hubby. Uh, people who check into a hospital on Facebook with no description just to get comments from their friends like, you okay, hun? And then for them to respond with, inbox me, hun, XX. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, that's kind of lame. What uh, is this? What are these, these like people? It's not I guess anything I've ever done. This, this, this is a more accurate representation of someone than their pictures even sometimes, right? Like, if you, you can really get an insight into what someone's like from that kind of thing, can't you? It just, yeah, it's, yeah, true. It really drives it home. Go on. Carry on. That's it. The other ones were just not worth reading out. Oh, I want to hear them anyway. <laughs> I didn't uh, think those were so bad. What? So the so uh, the writer has written in and is and How do you is feel annoyed about these by words? these. Mm. All right. So these are yeah. He's, uh, that was Danny said says these are phrases and words that that make them furious. So I gave it one hundred and ten percent. Furious. Uh, I gave it one hundred ten percent. Just just touching base. I hate that. Uh, the the customer is always right. Apart from the 95% of the time that they're wrong, according to Danny. And when Americans say, I could care less, instead of, I couldn't care less. I could care I less. Could care yeah, less. That is a very American yeah. thing. It is, isn't it? They defend it as well. They will defend that. 110%. Yeah. I hate say, that's that. how we say it in America. That's, that's the defense. 1,000%. Yeah, 1,000%. I hate what that. What is the, the phrase that people use? Is like, usage dictates meaning or something like that. So essentially all language is vague. And if people use it that way, that's how it now another, is. Another uh, American thing that I've noticed, like not recently, but like more, maybe more recently is, is they say, right? Like, you know, like you're saying something, you're like, oh, I hate that. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you saying to me? Like, that, that doesn't make sense to me, but they, the thing, they say I, it a I, lot. I don't like, um, I've, 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 I've spoken about this before on the podcast. When uh, when I've been at a restaurant with uh, Americans, the way they order, they'll say, "I I'll do the, uh, oh, yeah. I'll do this, I'll do the steak, I'll <laughs> do the steak." I... Just say, "Can I have the steak, please? I'll have the steak, please. I'll do the steak." No, please, no, thank you. Just I'll do the steak. I wonder if I right. I think it depends who you're hanging out with, right? But you do tend to mimic their speech patterns, and I feel like I could very easily see myself slipping into these weird ways of speaking unconsciously um, just to fit in. But sometimes go the opposite way as well and order very weird, very Englishly. Mm. Could you be so kind as to give me the steak? <laughs> one steak, please, sir. Could one please have some grey poupon with the <laughs> french fries, Grey <Grey-poupon>. poupon. <laughs> <laughs> that, that ad did not exist over here, but it was a big thing in the States. Right, right the Wayne's pre- World one. Uh, yeah. it, it, was, it was Wayne's World originally, right? No, it was, an, me. it was an advert. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was, I think. Yeah, but it was. poupon. Pardon me. <laughs> Do you have any gray poupon? <laughs> that was a well, class. One hundred and ten percent. They don't make. They don't All make right, here's this one. Anymore. This one's from Katie. Mm. Uh, 
Hi, boys. Sorry for the long email. I genuinely tried to cut it down. TLDR uh, paid a lot of money to see some bands and got stranded in the woods instead. You can read about this. This is a news story r happening right now. This is live rep reportage from the ground. Wait, on, uh, what, on what news site? News? Just B Well, no, no, no. Just Google, Google this. BBC Blue Ridge, News. No, Blue Ridge Rock Festival. So no, there's nothing on this one here. There is. Bl my partner and I busted our asses to get to the Blue Ridge Rock Festival in Southern Virginia to see our favorite band. They started their opener, huge drops of rain pelted us, which was a welcome relief in the 95 degree weather. I don't know how hot that is. What bands were playing? I don't know, look it up. It was a great concert experience well, until I'm the- I'm looking up the news and uh, the only thing I can find is Gary Lineker now has rules for social media. Stop use. looking on the BBC website and type Blue, Blue Ridge, Ridge Rock, Rock Issue Statement Festival. after cancellation of Hot Mess Festival amid diarrhea complaints. Blue Ridge go. Rock Fest 2023. This happened on Thursday, September the 7th, and it went through till Sunday, September the 10th. There you go. Uh, the, the 2023 lineup yeah. for Blue Ridge Rock Fest. Wow. Wow. Slipknot, Pantera. I'm just uh, reading this, yeah. Shine Down, Five Finger Death Punch, Limp uh -huh. Biscuit, Evanescence, God. Oh my <laughs> Stained, God. Megadeth, <laughs> Lamb of God. Papa Roach. <laughs> oh <my laughs> damn wow, that is a Jesus. huge lineup. Jeff Hardy, oh. Rise Against, Three Days Grace, Cypress Hill. Fuck Man. off. Christ. Jeez, baby oh. metal? I think, what? I think God was trying to stop this festival from happening. That's why the weather went so bad. <laughs> Three this Six is, Mafia? This is literally my entire shelf from the 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there we go. God, they started man. their opener and huge drops of cool rain pelted us, which was a hey, welcome relief. Hey, down at the bottom here in the club experience artist, Vanilla Ice and Insane Clown Posse. <laughs> oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> Holy Get me out. shit. Uh, it was a great concert experience until the wind picked up and the lead singer said, hey guys, we're out. They rushed off stage and we got an announcement saying we were to evacuate you to severe weather and go back to the shuttle buses. The parking lots were five miles away which will become important later. We milled about for a few minutes because it didn't look too bad, and then the rain and wind subsided. The pre-recorded message stopped, but none of the staff had been updated on what was going on. We waited near the exit until lightning cracked just to the side of us. Everyone collectively yelled, and we all started to walk towards the exit. We had 30 to 50,000 festival goers began trekking through mud towards the shuttle stop where the two buses were wait waiting. Close lightning kept cracking overhead, but despite being in an incredibly dangerous situation, everyone kept their cool. Holy shit, um, man. So yeah, Out of just... this whole lineup, the only person I would actually even remotely want to see is probably Danzig. That's it. But Danzig. The rest of this is just my worst nightmare. This I is just a, this America, though. Like, this. The weather in America is much more dangerous. It's a four-day rock wild. festival Suddenly. in America. Jesus. Where was this? West Virginia? Some, some, some yeah, West Virginia. Saying? Southern says, Virginia. Yeah. Is this a thing that can happen? Suddenly these bad weather conditions can roll in and uh, surprise I mean, maybe they were like, oh, it's a bit grey, and then all of a sudden... You can, do can you can do some camping while you're there. Yeah. So some it was what, blowy, blowy Now with storm. the lowest tickets and camping prices of any four-day rock festival in America. That's what the slogan is. There you go. Hmm. But apparently oh, a total mess. A hot a mess. A hot mess. Hmm. All right, next oh, email. That sucks. I'm yeah. sorry to hear sorry, that. Sorry, Katie. This one's yeah. from Sam. Uh, you guys have spoken at different times about ways to punish your kids or threaten them with punishment, such yeah. as counting down from three or Sip saying, I'm going to phone grandpa. Yeah. I worked that with a guy. Still works, by the way. Still works. I worked with a guy a few years back who had a cracker of a way to keep his son in line. He would carry a receipt in his wallet, and when his son, probably six to seven at the time, began to act out, he wouldn't shout. He would simply go into his wallet, produce the receipt, and tell his son he was still within his refund period, so if he kept playing up, he'd return into the shop. <laughs> so seen it in action once and it Holy worked every shit. time. shit. I like oh that one. God. It's worth a try. That, yeah, that is worth a try. That makes that, that fucks with your mind though, right? Like, yeah. you think that you are like a Buzz Lightyear doll or something. Do you know what I mean? In your 30s, you're wearing people's skin if that's your child. Because <laughs> you you're a kid, right? And you've seen all these even more lifelike dolls in the supermarket you might think that's where you came from that's like a more plausible origin story than mm. whatever the fuck actually I, happened it doesn't really work in a movie if they're like turns out the killer 
was threatened with being returned to the shop as a prank by his father, and the cops would be like, well, that explains why he's a serial killer then. Mm. No one does that. Yeah, I don't, I, it doesn't sound that bad to me, in all honesty. No, I think it's I also fine. think the it's fact he funny. remained calm is pretty funny. I like that. Yeah. I think all it's right. just that, that it, maybe it's just so kind of strange, the threat, that that's the, th that's the real threat <laughs> of it, right? They don't know. They don't know. They can't call you on it. Like, oh, yeah, go on then. And then suddenly they're in a warehouse they just, they're waiting to be picked up. But I think kids are obviously taking a risk, aren't they? They're always going to be like, what happens if I, you know, yeah. if I push this, right? That's when they start getting tricky, uh, when they start calling your bluff. Yes, and my 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 fourteen year old is at that stage now, where she's like a poker player who started to learn when to. She spotted your tells, and she's mm. figured out, oh, they can't there's, actually do anything about this. There's time. They, there, it's weird with like the older they get. Maybe I maybe it's different with a fourteen year old, but certainly with an eleven year old, there's like we we find now like if he's tired, he'll he'll play up a lot more. Yes, you know? like, but yes. he'll be really sassy and just kind of like uh, like uh, obstructive in weird ways and stuff. Like mm. he's. He's like he's like pushing boundaries and stuff, but it's not like it's not awful, but it's just it's just annoying, you know. It's angsty, but yeah, it's only like it, it's only like if he's really tired, and then you know something doesn't go his way or something like yeah. that. Yeah, I, I think that I, I've got the same with my eleven-year-old. She, she's always tricky. been a bit more dramatic. I remember one time, uh, her and her and Mrs. F um, and my eldest were out. They'd gone somewhere for for a weekend, and they were on some little bicycles just doing very gentle tour of this sort of countryside not a big hike or, or cycle or whatever yeah and she was really tired and she was so tired she told them that she got off her bike and threw it on the ground just lay on the ground near a tree and they were like come on we gotta go she's like no leave me i live here now i'm too tired to go like she was she'd <laughs> given up and i think yeah. if they'd left she would have just lain there she, she'd just given up but she her energy levels are like she's fine she's fine she's fine and then it's like bam and yeah. it's like complete crash. So what we figured out is you just have to constantly feed her just all the time. And she's yeah. she's like a stick. So I think she just burns energy. So you just keep giving her food or the promise of ice cream or whatever, and she'll be absolutely no problem. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's like <laughs> it's like the, the older your kids get, the the quicker they get bored as well. You're oh, doing yeah. something. And and boredom is like the, just the worst thing, like the worst oh. affliction that they could ever suffer through. You know? How long like, how long are we gonna be waiting for? Uh, about ten minutes. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, and it's like ten minutes. Yeah. Come on. I mean like it like sometimes I say I'm like you think I want to do this like all day <laughs> yeah. long? Like yeah. I, it's nonstop. I have to do shit I don't want to do all day long. You're bored for five minutes. I'm thing. fucking bored the minute I wake up. We are and no... until the minute I go to bed, I'm bored. <laughs> we are different. We're no different. Like <laughs> uh, any person on a train for five seconds is on their phone. You know, any any we but we like that doesn't go away. You know, it's always yeah. But that. we don't turn to the other passengers and go, "I'm bored. I'm bored." We don't make a big deal about it. We start crying. Yeah. We just Imagine go, oh. you're just like sitting on the train. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> when did we get? Oh, we I'm there? so bored. <laughs> oh, so like in the seat like, of the like guy you're dying. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> He's on my seat. Get off my seat. Oh, right. that's what it's like. Here's that's another one. This like. is a, this is a this is a statistical email from Tom. Uh, as a certified mega fan of the podcast. <sighs> I decided to put together some neat. Wait, looking... who certified you? This guy, apparently. No, but uh, who certified him? You can't say certified that's without a good certification. Point. That's the a doctor. good point. The, the doctor. Tom, Tom, you're not certified. Um, oh. We have to certify you as a as a mega. We're, I, might, we're the, I might have certified We're the mega him. fan gatekeepers. I might have done and, it. And I didn't see any paper cross my desk in this. True, regard, I've signed so. signed and stamped nothing. Well, no, nothing. We just need. It's right. like a joint bank account. Only one of us needs to sign. Well, I don't. I think it's a. I've no, been selling certificates no. <laughs> at the back of my van for years. Oh man, hundred right, pounds a time. This is a graph about how Triforce has changed over the years. The whole thing took longer than I thought, so I've only plotted one key metric so far: consistency. Right, which I like. <laughs> <laughs> Despite my initial idea, the podcast was run haphazardly and with little planning. You fucking go to hell, Tom. How dare you? It's true. Yeah, yeah, go to hell. Yeah. You, you go down to H-E double hockey stick. We'll see you there. <laughs> yeah. I've discovered you there. guys have done a good job consistently throwing out podcasts. In the strictest terms, consistency has been good over the last two years. In 2022, we released exactly one podcast per week on average. And this year, you're on track to do the same. 
Nice. Being less strict, consistency has been good for almost four years. In 2021 and 2020, 0.92 podcasts were released per week on average. So, you know, we missed a few weeks. Prior to this, consistency was not so good. Of particular note is 2018, which I consider to be the laziest year of Triforce so far. Only 27 podcasts were recorded, tied with 2016 when the podcast started late in March. A lot of the trend lines show similar behavior. Do you guys want to see this graph? So what, we yeah, only did we're... 50% in the first two years. I think that we didn't really make a big thing of it um, and make like we now we're like, mm, we're going to need some extras and, and all well, the rest yeah. of it. So obviously the, the, the idea of this podcast is that it's kind of relatively timely. Like a lot of the time we will record the podcast and it'll go out the next week. But the mailbag has been a real help to fill in those gaps when you guys are away or I'm away. I hope it's like a beautiful pie chart. Or um, it's, it's a it's a graph. I hope it's, it's a, a beautiful visual, graph. like one of those, uh, you know, maps, like a uh, like a uh, you know, with the with the big balls and the small there. balls. The That's map. it. I don't know if you can show that on stream, Luke. How am I going to do it? it? If you if you click on the top right of Discord, there's a button that says "Show Chat." <laughs> I don't even have a computer here. Just... Well, it's sending oh, it's oh, I, see it. I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. nice. That's nice. Um, yeah, I don't know. The, I don't know if there's a way for me to to show it. You're eating a banana. Either way, it's it's posted in the channel. I don't know if anybody can get it. Just, so our, look, our... at home, just imagine a fucking graph <laughs> where the x-axis is month, yes. and the y-axis is podcast released per year. And 2022, we did 52, so we did we did plenty. And obviously, we're at this at this stage here. We're exactly on course to match our best year ever, which was last year. The consistency has so we had a hundred percent consistency last year. Yes, so we are we are actually That's on amazing. course. That's amazing. 2018 must have, have, been, must have been like a heavy travel year, right? I, well, I'm sure we were all traveling a lot. Like uh, 2018, didn't we go to um, Seattle for like two weeks, Lewis, in 2018? Mm. Or was that? I guess well, I'm sure we were away thing, a guys, ton. as well. We weren't recording ahead of time. Now, I mean, we no. didn't do the mailbag. We didn't. We didn't do two episodes a week, which we sometimes do to get ahead. Like we didn't do any of that. So this was just us recording, basically when we were free. That was the old days, and now obviously we've uh, we've moved on. We, it's all it's all far more. I think actually, do you know what it is? It's really just luck. Like a lot of the time, we got a little bit ahead, and then we went away, and then we got a little bit ahead, and every single time, it just tends to be we've just just got enough podcasts to cover us. It. Every yeah, yeah. time we got exactly the right amount. <sighs> uh, we're not really trying. A lot of the time, you know, this podcast is is treated fairly casually we don't stress out over it if someone can't make it for whatever reason we're just like okay we'll do it next week um but and so we're not intending to be 100 percent. it just is mm. it's luck so but thank you for noticing that's it's yeah. i appreciate you noticing because i'm proud of it i'm actually really proud that we've managed to be consistent um it's a, it's a pleasure to 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 provide like a a good Thing to people. I hope you, I, I just, like I'm it. just going through the motions with it now. <laughs> You're just trying to poop it out. Yeah. Do you guys want to hear? This is the title of this this email. The most redneck first date ever. <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> Hit me. I'm right. ready. Uh, I'd read a book. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> it says, "Please do your best hillbilly accent for this." Well, so, hell yeah. we, well, I've, I've been a listener since the start, and the Yogg's cast you since 2012. Uh, this is in reference to episode 262 when you ask people to write in about the worst first dates. <laughs> 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 it's goofy. I can it's hear goofy. Uh, well, I can hear the lack of teeth in your uh, mouth right now. In, in 2020, I dropped out of college and moved back to my hometown in bumfuck nowhere, Vermont. Might be a real place. That's a place? Him. When quarantine finally lifted, I was lonely, but mostly horny. So I decided to put myself out there and go on some dates. The I imagine that when I hear this, I just imagine somebody hibernating and then, you know, coming coming around after a long hibernation, just being really horny. Yeah. Just getting uh, out there and just being like, Fuck. Just get it on. They should, your, that should be in sci-fi movies when they, when they come out of, uh, yeah, they pop out of the hibernation tank and they all just start fucking like rabbits. That would be a change. In Star Trek, that would really change things up. That would um, we were, uh, So there was a match with a girl I knew from high school. We were never friends, but I remember her seeming like a pretty chill person. Boy, did she change. For starters, she must have used old photos because she was significantly larger. I have, <laughs> I have nothing against plus-size people, and most of my previous partners were larger, but the fact she hid this felt pretty dishonest. 
Normally, I could overlook it. We all have insecurities. I don't have a rippling six pack myself, but this was only the tip of the iceberg. The, de the day itself was just meeting up at a local lake to go fishing. That's incredible. Wow. When, a fishing day. I know. Yeah. Did she, she bring her own rod? Well, I think she was hoping to use his. Uh, <laughs> but we'll find out. When she got out of the car, a good amount of cans spilled out with her. I awkwardly helped her pick them up. I noticed that she had two or three trash bags crammed in there as well. Good I know she wasn't homeless or anything, because later on in the date, she mentioned how she had a curfew. She's 25 years old. She has a curfew. It must be weird to, to hook up with somebody that you went to school with after a couple of years and they've changed like yeah, a they bit now... or, or a lot sort of thing, because you have that familiarity with them and maybe a bit of trust through the familiarity. But... Clearly, if somebody's getting out of a car with cans spilling out and garbage bags and yeah. whatnot, uh, you just I mean, think that, this person has image. changed substantially. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a very funny image. Yeah. You both park up next to this beautiful <laughs> lake in Vermont, you know, ready to fish. This gorgeous fisherman gets out with his like red, you know, red check shirt. And is the this going to be fish? like one of those things? Like, no, nah, this is. I just made this all up. It's actually no, just no, the no, plot no, no, of no, no, no. Finding Nemo or whatever. No, no, no. Okay, it's like okay. a rusty. The rusty door scrapes open. <laughs> Tids spill <laughs> out and the big out. boots like clonk down. Like, oh my god! Okay. She also she also pulled a knife on me as we were heading from our cars to the water. Could have just been an awkward joke since she just showed me the knife and said something like, "Don't try anything." But she seemed serious, and it made me very uncomfortable. Jesus. She then proceeded to spend the next half an hour telling me about how she bumped into her ex in a Walmart, and they decided to get back together. This was when oh, wow. she was on a date with this guy. But the real cherry on top was when she mentioned very flippantly that her cousin had repeatedly tried to hook up with her after we'd all graduated. She wasn't joking either because we had multiple cases of incest at our school. The date did not last long. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, congrats uh, on a terrible, terrible date. Okay. That's got to be one of the worst ones we've had for sure. It's pretty bad. That's a pretty bad pretty one. And bad we've had date. some bad ones as well. So I don't oh, know if man. I've seen any red flags there. <laughs> <laughs> Lou's just so desperate for a date now he's like he's, my standards are rock bottom I would take that easy yeah how many cans did you say it was that spilled on <laughs> well, two or three is okay but like five or six probably not oh uh, my god man. I can fix her uh, so it's never I, 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 <laughs> oh alright I got another one for you here uh, these are a few stories my dad told me when he worked for, what is CN Rail? It's Canadian so, National Rail. Okay, right. in Alberta, Canada, as a conductor. So most of the tracks are one track with sidings uh, for passing other trains. Um, so with grain trains, they may have to stop to let another train pass. The cars will leak, attracting deer, and when the deer get scared, they run directly away from the danger, straight down the tracks, and get fucking smashed to bits by trains coming the other way, which is awful. Jesus. Um, one day, they're exiting a tunnel next to a river, and there were sheep or goats all over the track. And upon exiting the tunnel, the train just sent sheep flying absolutely everywhere. <laughs> um, hell. And across the river, there were a bunch of campers. Um, and I guess they would have just been enjoying a nice scenery, and then out of the tunnel <laughs> so there's fucking sheep and fucking <laughs> bits of sheep everywhere oh, fucking unbelievable oh, oof. yeah oh, wow that sounds great that's like you know sheep brain yeah that's like good that's like kind of good weather they can like cook that all up on the barbecue right you get it fresh yeah you could barbecue that easy yeah you yeah, can we're that. eating well tonight <laughs> mates back on the menu, boy. Uh, this is an email from jacob uh, long time listener here from the UK and for the past three years I've been an engineer working in nuclear fusion Wow um, I was so hooked on the conversation about Sips' new dishwasher in mm. Mailbag episode 17 that the transition to fusion really caught me off guard <laughs> <laughs> We do have these hard turns in the mailbag We do I almost feel like we haven't like finished talking about the festival we should I haven't really processed the Canada Rail deer and sheep getting hit, and now we're already yeah. talking about dishwashers and fusion reactors. It's yeah. kind of like I need to get a new one. Getting, we have a slimline one, but it's, it, it's it's at capacity. We need a we need a big one. Yeah, we need a real big one. Oh, there's five of you. You're gonna need a big one. So we need a huge one. Yeah. Sips mentioned a project to crack fusion in France. This is yes. a project called the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor. 
As the name suggests, although it's being built in France, it's an international collaboration involving the EU, UK, China, Japan, US, and Russia. Many of these countries have designed and built individual parts, which are then shipped to France to be assembled. Yes. You know what's going to happen? Go it's going to be a success, and then France is going to turn around and say, we did it. Yeah, we Th that's what they do it. every time. That's, a, that's <laughs> like their, that's their like, trademark move. They do Almost that all the time. Raison yeah. uh, as you can imagine, with so many big players, there's a lot of politics involved. This, combined with some huge engineering challenges, means the project is running massively behind schedule. Unfortunately, the machine will stay will still only be able. Unfortunately, the machine will still only be an experimental reactor, and therefore not produce electricity for the grid. Instead, it will be used to prove scientific theories that we can extract more energy from fusion than we have to put in. The next generation after this project are expected to be actual power plants that can turn the fusion energy into useful electricity. Unfortunately, that's decades away, so don't get too excited. Um, so there you go. If you have any questions about fusion, fire away, and uh, and maybe uh, Jacob can uh, can tell us. God, yeah, I, it's um, I have no. If idea. I put my head in the fusion <laughs> reactor, what would happen to it? <laughs> <laughs> so when we get about CERN, is it? Such a typical fucking, typical fucking idiot punter question about any scientific project. Uh, if I, I was, if that. I, if I went into a black hole, oh, what would happen? If I put my head in a black hole, what would happen? To it? It's always if I put my. Why don't you put your head in anything first? Like put your hand in maybe something you don't mind. Just going in head first. I mean, you mind losing it, but like you wouldn't. You might not die straight away. You know, like. <laughs> I love that. If I, put oh. my head, if I put my head in this meat grinder, hey, if I were to put my head in this wood chipper, you know? <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, fuck. This Halloween season, we're brought to you by Manscaped, who have taken a step up from last year's ball o -ween to bring your face the cleanest shave it's ever seen. So this season, no need for toilet trouble. Manscaped's all-new Handyman is the best way to get rid of that stubble. Featuring a compact design and next-generation skin-safe technology, the Handyman was designed to give you a smooth finish without the mess of a traditional shave. So get the sweetest treat this Halloween by going to manscaped.com and use the code TRIFORCE for 20% off plus free shipping. It may be spooky season, but you don't want to scare people with your scraggly beard. Give them something to look at with Manscaped's Handyman. For wet and dry use, feel free to bring this anywhere and everywhere. The compact design and airplane friendliness make this the perfect travel tool on the go. And being able to shave up to three days growth without the mess of a wet shave is priceless. For wolfmen with a little more scruff, Manscaped's Beard Hedger Pro Kit has everything you need to tame your mane. This cordless trimmer has a rotary wheel that gives you 20 hair cutting lengths, all with a single guard. So no more drawers full of extra add-ons collecting cobwebs. Halloween costumes may take a lot of effort, but beard grooming doesn't need to. You can get 20% off and free shipping with the code TRIFORCE at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code TRIFORCE. For a look as sweet as candy, get yourself the handyman from Manscaped. On with the show. So, this is from Amber. I've been a long-time listener, and I've been watching since blah, blah, blah. In regards to your recent discussion about Bristol Zoo having closed and moved to the wild place, I have some extra information as I did work experience at Bristol Zoo when I was doing my level three diploma in animal management. Nice. Uh, the zoo was aware of its area limitations and wanted to expand. The major problem is that many of the buildings surrounding the zoo are listed buildings because it's quite a snazzy part. Yeah, of it is. It is a snazzy part. Yeah. So it's old, they couldn't, too. It is old. So they couldn't purchase them and demolish them to build the extra space they needed. Yeah. So they just fucking moved. That's it. Yeah, fair enough. We all I thought, it had, I thought it had closed. I think the place that they moved to is better anyway. It's a lot more natural looking. It's it's bigger. There's they they can build bigger enclosures and and stuff. I think they'll they'll be able to better take care of all the animals and stuff there too. And they can get more animals. It's more, it's much bigger. More in there. Jam yeah. them in. I Jam don't know. Them in. Like I feel like they've lost the branding. stack them up to the rafters. They've lost the branding. You know the the branding of Bristol Zoo. Who's gonna go to the wild place? You know, people look at people go to somewhere and they look up a zoo and they go to the zoo. They're not going to look up the wild place. What's that even? Well, I mean, they can always. And it's miles away. It's not too late. It's just going to be school trips going there. Yeah, 
And that's it. Well, well Longleat isn't in the middle of a town. Really. No, and like, and honestly, Longleat isn't branded that well either. It's just the yeah. name of a of a of a big country estate. Like it's yeah. you know. I mean, you know, I think if it's bigger, people Long will park up manners. and go there. I mean, look yeah. at Thorpe Park. You know, that's not it's not in the middle of a neighborhood. You've got to drive to get there. I think you're wrong, Lewis, on this. Yeah, when we when we went, Lewis, like it was early on too. Like Bristol Zoo was still open, and we went and it was packed. There was tons of people. Oh wow. There. Yeah. Well, I'm wrong then. I'll be wrong. All right. This is uh, this is from Nick. I can have uh, long time listener from the Netherlands here. Please don't do an accent. Okay. Right. Okay. I wanted to email you guys about two returning topics <laughs> okay. within your podcast: where the listeners are and what they do for work. This is quite interesting. Sips' very sensible rant on why anyone would ever want to go to a dangerous place like Death Canyon and so on gave me a chuckle, and I realized you might be interested in my work. I don't file anything, but I work as a tour leader for a British company traveling with international groups to off-the-beaten-track destinations. Syria, Iraq, Venezuela, North Korea, Yemen, Mali, and so on. Oh, God. Jesus. I expect there are only a few dozen of us doing this sort of work full-time. Well, now there are anyway, that's for sure. I currently am in Afghanistan listening to the podcast and leading a two-week trip where we visit the historical sites of the country but have to deal with the Taliban on a daily basis. Good grief. See attached photos. And then there is a photograph of a car with an ISIS flag hanging from it. Um, Post it in the chat. I want to see this. Uh, okay, let me, down let me download these. There's a picture. So to describe it to chat, the guide is the guy on the right with the green scarf. Then there is a lad next to him with an AK-47. Oh my God. There and is, a lad yeah. next to him as well. There is a picture of a car with a big... ISIS looking flag on. Uh, there is a picture of one of the Afghanistani gun shops where you can just buy pretty much any gun you want. Uh, and there is also a picture of a pretty stunning, uh, it looks like possibly the inside or the outside of a mosque. Yeah, like some um, sort of, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, some insane tile work on that. It is. That's some fucking tile work. I could imagine you, <laughs> the Taliban are closing in and you're like, geez, this is some nice tiling you've got yeah, here. Yeah, no, what, great what kind tiling. Of now, is that? Our, the Discord is now flagged by uh, the uh, the CIA <laughs> <laughs> as well. But... They're looking at tiles, sir. <laughs> Send a drone strike right away. Uh, yeah. So there we go. Our clients are often interested in geography slash sociopolitics slash history, but most of what we call country counters uh, right. the latter oh, a few thousand maybe God. worldwide people trying to visit all the countries yes. in the world there are oh, websites right. and communities keeping track of all of it yes the whole thing does get a bit obsessive and ridiculous with people stealth camping overnight at the vatican because they think you need to spend at least 24 hours in a place to say that you've been there um so with the vatican 24 hour stealth camp you can imagine the pope just bumping into you you know, what are you doing? And you're just like hiding in one of the toilets or something and the Pope comes in. Um, on the other hand, some people think flying in and out are just to sort of tick off yeah. uh, the list. And the community has polls on whether being blackout drunk and not remembering a country counts as having been there. Um, or what if you entered illegally or you just drove through but never got out of the car and physically touched the ground? Um, I, think it's, the I think you should make up your own rules as long as you spiritually believe you saw the essence of that country. That's fine, right? Like, I don't, I don't like the idea of just being in the airport. I think you have to get out of the airport. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I yeah. feel like I, I don't mind the stay the night rule, but I also think that you don't necessarily need that. Like, if you've walked around Vatican City for the day, you've fucking seen ninety percent of that country. That's more than any other fucking country you're going to see in in a day. You know, yeah, um, or or ever. I mean, I haven't seen ninety percent of the UK, but. Oh God, yeah. I mean, yeah. Certainly, I, I. I mean, I may have been past a lot of it in a car or on a train or on a plane, but I wouldn't say that I've experienced it. I've never been to Cheddar Gorge or Wookie Hole, but I'm well, sure <laughs> I've driven past them both many times. I'm just saying, you could 100 percent the Vatican City quite easy, right? Go to all the pubs. I think you could go yeah. to all the museums. The pubs. Do you know what I mean? Like you could, you know, check out a lot of it. Um, have a walk around and. Whereas that's that's so I guess, I guess you know I don't necessarily agree with the overnight camping bit. But I I think you just have to feel a sense of 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 awareness. You know I've seen this mm. a couple of I've seen a couple of um, people on the dating apps have got like country counter tickets. They're like oh seventy six out of one hundred and forty eight or whatever, and they're very proud of that. And that's I think yeah. it's a fun idea. Um, I, I agree, but as uh, as Nick goes on, there are some people, the people that have the time and money to do these trips, 
can be eccentric, and as a tour leader, we've seen it all. E.g., there's <sighs> Underwear Man, who leaves a worn pair of underpants everywhere he goes. Uh, just like, right. I don't know why. Uh, no idea why. Also, we also had one guy that tried to defect to North Korea while on tour. Um, and another one that walked up to a pride of lions in Chad, thinking that he could Did he put his cubs. head in? Did he put his head in their mouth? <laughs> <laughs> what would happen? Five we walked to a lion in his mouth! <laughs> uh, so that he could pet the cubs if the, if the mums were sleeping. Fuck so, yeah, in hell. W well, yeah. Wow. These guys, yeah. they're almost like little toddlers, you have to keep them safe. I think that's a lot of it, yeah. Wow, those those three are are exactly the kind of people I would imagine would be doing this sort of dark tourism stuff. That's kind of what it is, isn't it? It's like going to Chernobyl or something, you know? Or Yeah. Um, oh, God, we were watching. Were you watching that vid, Lewis? The one where oh there God. were the guys that swam in the water. There's this who lunatic. Was showing it to There's us? this lunatic on YouTube who's this Ukrainian guy who's Russian speaking, and he, he, he visits Chernobyl with his mates, and they they mess around in the reactor. Well, they just <laughs> they dude. They, they go in. You know the way it's, it's got a concrete shroud over Chernobyl to stop yes. anybody get in. Yeah, they, it's they like get a out tomb. Way to get in. They made a diving suit out of a literal fishbowl. And then what looks like a bunch of bin bags and tape, and the guy pumps air to him with a bicycle pump. They go in the water and <laughs> fuck around in the Chernobyl reactor and like trying to get into the, the sealed off part. It is absolutely insane. Uh, and I don't know why the fuck they do it other than the clicks, I guess. It's, it's bizarre. It's, it's absolutely bizarre. They drank some water from the flipping under the power plant. Like They drank it's the water. Dude. insane, dude. Um, one of them, perhaps was telling me, one of them went to the doctor with, and they, they said he had light radiation poisoning or like light yeah. radiation sickness. And they said, drink some peppermint tea. That was the fucking thing that the doctor said for them to do. Yeah. What the fuck <laughs> is yeah. that? It is. <laughs> Utterly crazy. Oh, so yeah, that is um, that is who is doing that? Like, oh, it's it's crazy. It is. It's, How many views do they get though? God knows, quite a lot. If we're talking about it, I assume. Yeah, they we're do. We're pretty okay. late to the party. You know, if we've Fuck, heard I'm about go something, buy some bin bags right now. Then we're I'm gonna um, go find a. I'm gonna go buy a fishbowl. Oh <laughs> I'm God. getting in on this. Yeah, it's a like, new trend. What, what, they literally. The, I mean, the sarcophagus, I guess, has been built deliberately for this exact reason to stop idiots breaking It's amazing in. that whoever, they were obviously like, you know, some fucking idiots are going to try and get in here. We're going to have to build a giant concrete shell. I guess it's to stop debris getting out as well, but you just know. What would happen? Someone had to press if I you. Put I my head. Head. Yeah. It's like, yeah, real <laughs> <laughs> That's how the accident happened in the first place. They knew that. There was a meeting. Comrade Dyatlov was like, what would happen if I stuck my big head in the reactor? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I feel like that's the kind of place where you wouldn't really need to worry about people getting in or out of it, right? Oh, yeah. I, I think for the for the most part, most people don't want to go anywhere near there. And then for the people that do want to go near there, well, <laughs> I mean, you can't. Yeah, I wouldn't go out of my way to stop them. You just let <laughs> yeah, them. It's no point. Let them crack on. Fucking... Yeah. All right. This is a, a funny but sad Tinder experience. Do you guys want to hear this? God. Yes. Yes. Me. This is from this is from Scott. This is from Thank anonymous. You, this is from anonymous. Lewis, I did not write this in. Lewis wrote in. <laughs> Regarding the discussion about dating apps, I wanted to share an amusing yet somewhat disheartening dating experience of mine. After a few months of using Tinder with little success, I decided it was time to call it quits. However, since I'd already paid for Tinder Plus, I didn't want my money to go to waste, so I came up with an idea. Instead of using my own profile. I decided to portray myself as the sorting hat from Harry Potter. <laughs> Given that many of the girls on the app were Harry Potter fans, with some even making it their defining characteristic, I thought the sorting hat profile might pique their interest and lead to some matches. My plan was to read their profiles and sort them into Hogwarts houses accordingly. I created the sorting hat profile and took a bold step. I swiped right on every woman aged between 18 and 30 within a 20 mile radius of my hometown. Soon enough, the matches started pouring in. Didn't take long for me to dive into their profiles, scrutinize their photos, read their bios, and craft messages based on their personality traits and the house I assigned them to. For instance, one girl worked as a zookeeper 
and had pictures of the animals she cared for. Assigning her to Hufflepuff was a no-brainer. Right. She was I overjoyed with means. the sorting. No, me neither. Some <laughs> other girls whose profiles left me with doubts didn't take kindly to being placed in Slytherin. I simply shrugged in response via text. I did I've, all heard of this. The, I've heard these words before, but I didn't realize what they were. They're, ha they're house names for... for house. For, for Harry Potter. Huff, Huffle Potter. For Huffle Huffle Potter. Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> well, that's how well we know Huffle Potter. Um, I did all of this late one evening and eventually headed to bed. The next morning I was greeted by an astonishing sight. More matches than I had ever seen before. I had more matches in one night than most guys could dream of having in their lifetime. As I scrolled through these women's profiles, it felt surreal. It was as if a curtain had been lifted, gift revealing a flood of matches after months of receiving only occasional ones. I was inundated, and it was quite disheartening to realize that the fictional sorting hat had managed to secure more matches than I ever had or likely ever will. <laughs> Girls I thought I might have a chance with had never matched with me, but they eagerly awaited their house sorting. I decided to delete the profile and never do it again. Scott, great story, mate. Great That's story. great story, well dude. Well done. That feels like... Oh wait, so you, so did you ever go on a date with any of these people, like to to share your research or anything? No, I think they just wanted to be sorted. They just wanted to be. There sorted. There was no That's attempt at, at dates. That's um, so funny. That would be tough. I think. Right, it's, well, it's, here's the thing. I can the, understand what, what's why. What's the point? Like he's just spending his time doing it, but it's not going to lead anywhere. Well, There's no, no date comes out of it. They no just want to be sorted. Well. Yeah. Okay, for one, he could have been using his time to get an actual date. Instead. Sometimes people like to just do fun, jokey, silly stuff. Like two, yeah. Two, I think I could easily see someone like you know, fucking a YouTuber like Max Fosh or someone, you know, do this as their thing. Oh, I made a fake sorting hat profile and told girls what house they would be in, or you know, some, so, you know, it's like side men type shit, right? You could see that as a as a thing. The third. I like people on Omegle, you know, doing the fake profiles or whatever, or do it just, just sometimes people just want to entertain What's other people. What's Omegle? Right? What's Omegle? It's that one where you match with strangers on video, and there's there's always there's some there's there's always viral clips about people oh, surprising yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then also like sometimes I think when you're on Tinder, it's all very serious. It's very much like oh god, you know, it's nice. Oh, to, it's that, nice to I get, saw a like, clip where. I think it was two friends. They they were like chatting to each other and they had these avatars of like these very attractive people or whatever. And when it came down to it, they went on to the uh onto the thing and uh the video thing and then it revealed them on the video and they knew each other and they were just like they they just they 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 were dead. They were like laughing so hard. Oh is good. it that? Is is that Omegle? I'm sure yes, that is I think so. I, I saw one where it cuts to the is these two lads match with this guy and i'll see if i can do this on camera i'll so be back in two seconds he was Sorry, sort of doing seconds. this underneath the table and they were as well that's and then right. they, they they go up and they're like playing a little violin and he's shining a shoe that's right <laughs> like, that was, what was yeah, yeah yeah, yeah. I that was pretty fun that's good there's a good there's a good um someone in chat says big russian vladimir there's this um there's this russian guy who dresses up like a proper pink pinky head girl anime streamer really cute and um and he speaks with this like really light girly voice for a little while but then suddenly he's like hello it's me vladimir <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's great um he's quite famous is for doing it on on there um but yes oh big fan so mm. i think sometimes pflex people just get a bit like overwhelmed by the seriousness of these dating sites. So I can imagine swiping on something, a silly profile that's sorting out. There aren't enough of them on there, to be honest. Mm. Um, and yeah, I mean, you're not, you can't expect to get a date out of that if you're the fucking sorting hat. That's not going to, that's not how it yeah, works. Yeah, no, it's not going to lead anywhere. Not, but I mean, it is, it is kind of sad, I think, because, you know, it's just not being matched. Like, you feel like you're casting your net so wide. It feels like, it, it, it's, it's like if you went fishing in an area where all the fish had already been caught. And it's just, you're, you're still hopeful, but you, and obviously people are like, oh, the, uh, the fishing is not about catching fish. So, you know, going on dates and trying to put your profile out of this feels like fun at first, but after a month of coming up with empty line after empty line, it stops being fun. And it just, you realize the sea is empty and it's kind of tragic. It is, it's very sad. Yeah, it's, um, it's very soul crushing. I think it's very hard. To, well, I still to love you. If you want, what? if you want, if it doesn't work out with Mrs. F, we can get married. Oh, 
Is that my? Is that a proposal? <laughs> no, it's not a proposal. It's a suggestion for the contract. Not very romantic. Obliged. Well, no, but I mean, romance is dead, mate. You but you found that out. Oh my god, it, it is chivalry's on life support for sure. Yeah, you know. I won't be able to satisfy you physically, but we can play board games anytime you like. Oh, we. I, you will have to put up with quite a few cans of cider being drunk and. A lot of dotes. It feels like you're Hell saying if you don't love me as I am, you don't deserve me, whatever. Do you know what I mean when I'm, what is it? If you don't love me at my worst, <laughs> you don't deserve me at my best. That feels like that's what you're saying right now. Um, you smoothie. It's like you're setting me up. You're setting up already for this, like, you're setting the low expectations. You're like, we'll get married, but I'm going to fucking slobber around and get, it's gonna and, be awful and drink for cider you. and ignore you. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, well. But it's, you know, it's better than being alone. Is that better I than figure. being alone? I, I guess. Mm, probably not. But you seem like you, you'd, you'd want that. Some company. Uh, or you could just move in. We could put a little granny annex in the garden and you can, it can be the Lulu love pad and you can live at the bottom of my garden. But who's coming? You'll just visit it every night, will you, or every other night? No, you, well, well, you know, I don't know. Uh, no, I, I haven't thought it through. <laughs> All right, okay, so yeah, does you, you can just live near us? Oh. We'll throw food out to you in the evening. Oh, oh, thank you. Like bits of sheep that have been hit by <laughs> hit on the train tracks nearby. Yeah, this is a this is a a, a quiz that an urban planner sent in. Oh, we'll wait for Sydney, Sydney to get back. Australia. So, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to do the intro for it. If, real quick. If, 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 it's right. No, we'll wait. By the way, this commonly happens during the podcast. I don't know whether it gets cut, but this commonly happens that Sips just leaves for some reason for five minutes and then comes back and says, like, oh, sorry, sorry, the bin man got stuck in my hedge or some dumb shit. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. sorry, sorry, the, the builders who are doing the, the, the sewage line uh, needed a cup of tea. Uh, you know, they'll be, what do you think it's going to be today? So he's going to come back. I'll do my impression of Sips coming back. Okay. He's going to go, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ah, fuck me. Fuck me, dude. <laughs> fucking. Oh, this delivery guy just wouldn't fucking go away. I had to fucking deal with it. That's what he's going to do. Just like that. <laughs> okay. Fuck. Okay. I'm so excited. <laughs> I want him to come back right now. And here we go. There you go. I'm back. I'm sorry. That's it. <laughs> That's right. it. We thought That's you were okay. going to go. Fuck me! Oh man! Oh, the delivery <laughs> You'd have guy. Like a story. Oh. In, in my mind, I'm saying that. Yeah. Oh, okay. You can let yourself Shame. go. Just go on. Be, be. Share it with us. Share it with the class. Do you know what? I'm so done with the whole thing. I don't even want to. Okay. <laughs> I, just don't wanna, I don't even want. I'm just so done. We, we won't bring it up. I'm so All right. done. All right. This one is from Emma. Uh, you, Sips, and Lewis have discussed furries quite a bit. Have but we? you seem to be misinformed, so I'm here to put that right and answer any questions you have. Uh, my name is Emma, and I've been in the furry fandom for 10 years. Holy crap. And I'd like to defend this wonderful community against yeah. Triforce slander. Firstly, Lewis, mostly, seems to think that all furries obsessed are obsessed with wearing diapers. Maybe there are some, but in my 10 years, I've never ever met anyone who likes them, and I've met thousands of furries. No, your I, comments. Well, listen. I think that's uh, if, if it's like if you, you have met one thousands fetish, of furries you're and you went out of your others. way to ask them if they wear, wear diapers or not. <laughs> so you got the cold hard facts. The crinkling, yeah, Simon. Thank you. Um, I think that's that's likely that to be the case. I don't know. I think it's hard. To, I heard it was hard to get the suits off. Is what I'm saying. So it's a little bit like you're trapped. That's not the same as saying that you think they're all wearing nappies, is it? I'm just you know. Maybe not like full. It nappies. would make sense if they were wearing them, though, because you're not going to take. Yeah, like Lewis said, you're not going to just take the suit off and pinch a loaf, you know. Like, so, quick question then: When you see those guys dressed up as Mickey Mouse at Disney World and stuff, are they wearing nappies? Yeah, for sure. You reckon? Probably. They got those. They got like those NASA um, spacesuit um, P extractor. I'm sure things. they have. Yeah. All right. This one. Secondly, furries are not inherently sexual. They can be, but it's mainly about the fandom. That would be like people assuming you like porn because you play Overwatch, if there happens to be Overwatch porn. That's, this, is this is definitely not my right. words. They would be absolutely correct. Emma's thing. Wrong. <laughs> I, love, I love porn and I play Overwatch. <laughs> Every furry I've met has been obsessed with yiffing. Um, they have been yiffing each other. It's not a sex thing, furries. They, that is definitely not a thing, um, except it. In every t every time I've experienced 
furries anywhere that it's, it's been a, a thing a big a big a big it's not a sex thing let's it's actually i don't know joe what sure emma maybe it's not for you um, if you're having um sex with another uh person and you're both in persona do you have to make animal noises while <laughs> while you're doing it like um hmm. you know if you're dressed up as like uh like a donkey do you have to like you know, do the donkey sounds stay in full character? Or, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Well, well any questions we have, we can direct. Maybe to your Emma furry persona is not yiffable, Emma. You I know? thought they had tons of sex. I thought that was the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, that's why. <laughs> and that's my experience as well from doing events and with the furries having the con next door. But maybe people at cons are more sexual than I mean, just every, your everyday he's... furry in the street. If that's the case, my number one question is, why the fuck not? What is the point otherwise? What a waste of fucking time. You're dressing up like an idiot just to what? Walk around together in a suit? You could be having sex with each other. At least I don't understand this. I don't know if they're actually having like, um, oh my God, I don't actually even know. Is it like the sorting <laughs> hat again? Is it like, you know, they wouldn't want to actually have sex with the sorting hat? If I was invited by a sorting hat to fuck it, I might consider it. <laughs> what if he put you in? Would, would uh, afterwards? What if he was like, mm, "You're Slytherin"? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh god! What if you like put? You know how stuff comes out of the sorting hat? Like sometimes, like um, like swords and things. Like sorting hat seems to keep things in it. I don't know if you know the Harry Potter lore. What if you put the sorting no. hat on and it just started jizz like ran out from all these people who'd fucked it? Well, it started previously. leaking out of it. It just had a collection of jizz. Oh, in it. Man. Oh. What a thought. Thank you very much for that. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm looking at bad dates. Uh, I, I, we ran through so many emails today because it's such a long podcast. I, I, I'm about three emails short of, uh, of being prepared and no one has emailed in while we've been on air. There's been shit in chat. Listen, we don't give a shit. I'm trying to talk to the lads what and read emails. What is the email? At Perian flax at gmail.com. Gmail so yeah. There you go. If this you, is if you worth, posted your one in a, chat, just send yeah, it to him now. It. This, this is a You've great email. you five minutes. Here's a subject line. He almost pretended to be dead. Worst date, he almost pretended to be dead. Good grief. Um, hi guys, That's a just, power play. That's got to be a, a huge power play. Just catching up with the mailbag episodes, and here's my worst date story. Uh, I was seeing this guy, they're 24, 25, for a few months by this point and was staying in his flat. Important note, he had diabetes and was very open about it. One night as we were hanging out in bed, he suddenly stopped moving and was breathing really heavy. He looked very pale and sweaty and asked me to go get his test kit. Is Turns that out, considered brave to be very open about your diabetes? <laughs> like when people... <laughs> Excuse me, everybody. I am a diabetic. Like so you're brave. very dramatic so about brave. it. <laughs> He's so brave. I admire so him brave. so much. So brave. <laughs> I'm crying. He looked very pale and sweaty and asked me to go get his test kit. Turns out he was having a hypo and his blood sugar was dangerously below what it needed to be. I went to the bathroom to get him a towel while he ate some chocolate. And when I came back, he was laughing. I asked why and he said I was going to pretend to have died. But I couldn't <laughs> stop laughing. What, what the fuck is wrong with people? Why would you do that to somebody? You've just, you barely know them. You're going to pretend to be dead on a date? What the fuck? Now, how long have they been together at this point? Like a couple of months. What, living together? No, they were just like hanging out, like having sex, I guess, occasionally. I think I think that's actually not a date then, is it? They're just, you know, that's just fooling around with your then partner, I assume girlfriend or boyfriend at that point. You're not dating him. Well, you, I guess you're dating him, but that's not like a... I mean, that's... It's, it, 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 we, that would not fly early on. But three months in, maybe you could get away with it. Two months? Uh, judge the room, though. Oh, my God. How many dates have you gone on in two months? Unless you're seeing each other, like, multiple times a week. Yeah, anyway, e either way, this I'm trying to make excuses for it, but either way, this is terrible. Do ne Never do this. This is insane. But I, I know people that have been seeing someone for a couple of months, and I definitely, they definitely wouldn't describe them as their boyfriend or girlfriend. Right. I'm so if I'm kind of seeing someone, as if you're kind of seeing someone, does that mean you can just like kind of see other people as yeah, well? Yeah, like you're yeah. not you're not like attached to this I person. Feel like you're some, not committed. Yeah. yeah, sure. It depends on the person. Like you would also have had that it depends on the conversation you've had. Exactly. Oh, I'm God. just trying to explain, like, to just trying to think of ways to explain to my wife, especially that, like, with a legit you know. health thing. Yes, right, chat. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, yeah, how would you one. even? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's mental. Here's one. This is from Sam on the back of the most recent mailbag when. Sips described the optician, this was in August, so this was a while ago, 
Well, Sibs described the optician saying he had a beautiful eye in his test. Is that something the optician said to you? That is what exactly what the optician said. She said, that is a beautiful eye. It and I said, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it reminded me of the fact that every time I go to get blood taken, the nurse always comments on the fact I have nice big veins. Yes. Uh, and yeah. that, that creeps Sam out, which I could kind of understand. So it's saying, a bit... what, a, what a lovely big neck you have. The <laughs> I can see the veins very clearly in your neck. <laughs> it's kind of an odd compliment, isn't it, to have something? It is a weird compliment. Something, yeah. yeah, I love. Well, the size when I had of my prostate veins. biopsy done, and the guy was like, you, "You've got a really clean back passage." I was like, "Thanks, <laughs> wow, thanks very much." It's not often you get a compliment like that from somebody. He's like, "You know, it's really, it was really spacious in there. I was able to do all the work I needed to do, no problem, uh, no obstacles or anything." <laughs> Thanks. Have you had, any, you had any bleaching done? <laughs> nice asshole. <laughs> you got a real nice this asshole. Is, this asshole nurse, is nurse, get over here clean. and look at this thing. Get the other doctors in here. Guys, look at this fucking asshole. Oh man, that's a beauty. I could eat a sandwich yeah. off this asshole. Uh, this is gonna uh, this is gonna anger people. This is gonna anger people a lot, this next email. It angered me. Uh, right. this is from Lachlan. Is this uh, one of those those heavily toned ones where it's like you're a fucking idiot because no. you said something that no. only I would know about because I'm a professional in the field? You Sadly had no not. chance of ever knowing about it in a million years because you don't study the same stuff I study, but I'm just going to sit here and be really condescending to you for two minutes on my email? No, it's even worse than that. All, all right. right? Okay. You guys, I think this is going to anger all of us and probably everyone in chat as well. You may not be aware, so sorry, Sorry if I shatter the glass, but you're all pronouncing Maltesers wrong. All it's right. not Maltesers, it's Maltesers. What? <laughs> this is, was a polite public service announcement, <laughs> not a slag. <laughs> you guys always make my week and I wish you all the best. Love, Lachlan. Maltesers. Right. Um, uh, yeah, pretty bad. So... Uh, mm. That is that is definitely an unpopular opinion, according to Chat, who are Maltesers. furious. Maltesers. Uh, and then I guess we haven't got too long left here, so uh, this is from Jacob. Wow. Uh, I have a small story and a question to say. Well, it with my diary. Creme milk. egg as well. It's pronounced creme egg. Creme, creme, egg. creme egg de la creme. <laughs> Oeuf de creme, s'il vous plaît, monsieur. Oeuf de creme. Uh, I have a small story and a question for Sips and Lewis. In episode 153, Snooper Elite, you guys were talking about how female Twitch streamers receive a lot more inappropriate comments in their chat than you guys do. Yeah. At the time, I was not much of a Twitch user, so not very exposed to this creepy culture, but I was not surprised that it happens. After having the hearing the important part of your conversation, Sips made a comment that he'd been streaming for 10 years, and he's never once had a comment that says, I want to suffocate you in my giant tits. No. <laughs> I and I would remember. Hilarious. Still I waiting. Would remember. Still waiting. I, <laughs> I want to crush you in my big thighs. So to death. I found this hilarious, as did you guys. In fact, being yeah. the inexperienced Twitch user that I was, I decided that I'd go to your Twitch channel and comment this straight away. This was my Twitch channel. You had clearly forgotten what Sips had said, and I immediately got banned. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Purian does ban people. I, I do. It, I do not ban people uh, yeah. personally. I think Needless other people say, do it for me, though. Right. I will fucking get my hands dirty. All right. So, they, needless to say, I felt like a bit of an idiot. I've recently been watching the Scrubcast on YouTube. I would like to um, get back to watching the stream, but they can't because they're banned. My question to all of you, but mainly to Sips and Lewis. Do you guys think I deserve to be unbanned? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sure. I don't think you should be banned in the first place. Not not for joking around, but also, if uh, if somebody came to my chat and was like, "I just want to get my gigantic tits out and suffocate you. I want to put your face in between my big titties, and I want to I I want to draw every last breath out of you, and uh, and you pass away between my big my big boobies." My, my huge honkers. Fucking hell. I would mod you. Quite, uh, <laughs> I would not, I would there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Just give the give him the channel. It's yours now. Yeah, it's yours. Your you sips take now. over. Someone yeah. go pop that in his little copy pasta and sips his chat. I'm sure he will love to hear it. Make sure if you donate, that. Yeah. put that the exact I don't hear it transcript nearly enough. of that. There you yeah. go. Get it in there. Right, so well, it's, uh, it, it's weird though, stuff. right? Because like, uh, I'm sure that. Uh, I'm I'm sure that people I I'm sure that females receive messages from people all females. the time saying 
I want you to choke on my wiener or whatever. But like, I never get, I never get messages. <laughs> All right, yeah. Well, there we go. That's you know, enough. Well, this is what it there. is. Um, yeah. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Uh, I'm, was... I'm not unbanning because the, the lad didn't even bother including Come his fucking on, man. name. You have to unban him. Just... Well, he didn't even supply his name, so I can't. He can reply well, to the email. just unban somebody random and hope for the best. Maybe no you'll way, get him. man. What Some a... of them are banned sure, for just... very good reason. Um, everyone, we loved you. Thank you. This was uh, this was li- it's nice doing it live, isn't it? It's basically the same same shit. I get to see your beautiful faces when we're doing it. Um, yeah. yeah, thank you everyone for joining us for this one. Well, stay tuned for yeah. more podcasts. PFLAX is going to be on the next one in four minutes. So, um, so, so we, we better Good go luck. so they can get set up. All right, thank you, everyone. Enjoy. Bye. 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 Bye.